This review is brought to you by Mad Men Entertainment. Living in Australia and New Zealand? Need some awesome anime to collect? Well, Mad Men's got you covered. Order anime online or head to your local DVD store to purchase anime distributed by Mad Men Entertainment. Want to sample the anime first? Head over to Anime Lab, a streaming website bringing you the latest and greatest anime titles for you to watch online. No matter what, you can always keep up in the anime world thanks to Mad Men and Anime Lab. Toru Honda lives in a tent in the woods in the middle of nowhere. However, she's a happy hobo by choice, working part-time as a maid as her grandfather's house is renovated. Why not live with her parents? Well, her dad's been dead since she was little, and her mother passed away in a car accident the year before. But that doesn't keep Miss Honda down. Supported by her best friends, a former Yankee thug named Arisa Uatani, and a psychic girl named Saki Hanajima, every day is great for her. But one day while walking to school, she's met with a little cabin in the woods, and meets a man named Shigure, who has just painted some Zodiac figurines. When they get to talking, Toru learns that Shigure is the cousin of Yuki Soma, the school's most popular pretty boy. By sheer accident, she ends up losing her tent and ends up in the Soma house. The next day, trouble comes from above as Kyo crashes through the roof, but when she tries to stop the fighting, she learns of the family's secret. You see, when 13 certain members of the Soma family are hugged by a member of the opposite sex, they change into the 12 animals of the Chinese Zodiac and the cat. Allowed to keep the secret by the head of the family, the mysterious Akito, Toru must keep this safe while meeting the other Zodiac. Can Toru keep the secret safe while learning about the Somas and mending the broken people she meets along the way? Oh, Mom! I think this must all be a dream! Everybody's turning into animals! Fruits Basket is, without a doubt, one of the most beloved shoujo anime ever made and one of the staples of the early 2000s anime. Debuting in 2001, this year marks 15 years of the series. So how well does it hold up? Pretty damn well. Despite the biggest flaw of the series is that it's in the desperate need for a sequel or a new remake, the original still holds up very well. The animation, despite not being as shiny or crisp as say something like Cowboy Bebop, Princess Tutu, or Wolf's Rain, was still fairly well done by Studio Dean. The music was well done for the time, but it's none of these things that are the real reason the series is looked upon with fond memories. There's a reason a lot of fans, myself included, would still answer with this series when asked, Hey, I want to watch a show with great characters that's a mix of funny, heartwarming, and will make me cry. What should I watch? Fruits Basket. Watch Fruits Basket. In many ways, this is like the big bowl of warm soup you eat when you feel like crap, because damn if it isn't food for the soul. It's like coming home to a warm blanket. In many ways, this is why people keep passing it along like the Legend of the Zodiac. It's a fairy tale. You're invested because of the charm and wonder as much as you are the bitter string of heartbreak and emotion. It's woven as tight as a legend. Since the first airing of the series, the characters and messages and stories are some that have since been perfected, but you never forget the first time you've seen them. Take for instance Toru. We have a lot of new Torus, like Hiyori from Noragami, but you never forget Miss Honda. She's cheerful and kind, a bit dumb, but she cares about people. She's the light to a world of people left in the dark, yet sometimes you see that she doesn't know how to turn off her own needs to help others, to just be a little selfish for herself. She's the good of the good, the Dorothy and Oz to a ragtag gang going down the road, and she's perfectly foiled by her two main love rivals. You're still as stupid as ever, and I'm going to prove it to you by giving you exactly what you want. Only this time, I won't hold back. Okay, sissy boy! Yuki is the princely type who can't let anyone in, broken by his own past as the pedestaled rat, the favorite. However, he's far from the perfect prince that the Yuki fan club makes him out to be. He has a hard time relating and letting anyone in, even his own brother, but to be fair with how Ayame acts, I don't blame him. But it's Toru who helps him open up. Then there's the hot-headed Kyo. That's not what I meant to say! I, uh, what I mean is, I just, you know, I, uh, I don't even know why I'm doing this! It's just for some reason, ever since you left, I've been getting pissed off about everything, and I couldn't figure out why, so it just pissed me off even more. Treated like a monster his whole life outside of the one person, Kazuma, who gave him a chance. He's the beast of Toru's beauty. He's rough around the edges, but a good person. Seeing his backstory was honestly some of the toughest of the series, and despite how much he growled and kicked and screamed, you knew he was a good person. And even outside of the main cast, the supporting cast was all amazing. Headstrong yet insecure Kagura, the black and white Hataharu, the overly flamboyant Ayame, the even more overly emotional Ritsu, 
and the overly teasing and slightly perverted Shigure. Yet despite all of their cheer, it's quite clear that they're inherently broken people. It's why they need their Toru, their light out of the dark. But even out of those characters, there were always five I wanted more of. Hattori, the doctor with the harsh past, was always one of the best background characters. His backstory with Kana was one of the first times I think I'd ever experienced a story like that. He wasn't a bad person, but he was the first time I could remember someone being so tied up in their past that they had a hard time moving forward. Akito was the first time I had ever seen a downright abusive character. I will not spoil the manga for anyone who hasn't read it, but I did not forgive Akito for their actions. It's a lot like Loki from Marvel, it explains their motives, but it does not excuse them. Next are Kisa and Hiro. I'd like to talk about these two and Momiji as a pair and Momiji separately. And this is the part where this becomes less of a review and a more to get to know me. I'd be lying if I say that Fruits Basket didn't honestly shape me as a person. I will admit that three anime have truly influenced my life. One is Bakano, one is Tokyo Ghoul, and one is Fruits Basket. In many ways, Kisa's story hit harder than anything in my entire life. I was the same age as her when I discovered anime, and I was in a very similar situation. I too was relentlessly bullied. I had friends, but they didn't view me the same way back. People picked on me for being into anime, for liking agriculture, for my weight, for my hair. And I honestly didn't know how to emote out of it. So my friend Carrie accidentally got me into anime through art class. She was my Toru who helped me talk again. Like Kisa, I had to learn how to be myself again, to be a kind and gentle soul. And yet I ended up turning out like my own Zodiac animal hero. He's abrasive and selfish, but that's because he doesn't always know how to tell people how he feels. And that's still like me a lot. I'll tell you how I feel, but it's not the best way to go about things. And finally, there's Momiji. Who's in the forest strolling? The birds and the bees sing Momichi. The frogs in the pond are calling Momichi. Yes, it's true. Happy go lucky in hiding his pain. He's a little flamboyant, but he's got a good head on his shoulders, and he seems to know what's up. He also has one of the single most heartbreaking backstories in the entire show. It's honestly one of the most poignant moments in a show full of more heart and raw emotion put together than most. Well, I could quote the line word for word, I'm going to let Momiji do it for me. There's something I believe. I want to try and live my life carrying all of my memories with me. <laughs> and even if those memories are painful, even if they do nothing but hurt me, I want to keep them. Even those memories I sometimes wish I could forget. As long as I carry them with me, as long as I can keep holding on, then someday, Someday I'll be strong enough that those memories don't hurt me anymore, and I'll be glad that I have them. That's what I believe. And it is in this what represents Fruits Basket the best. Is the show flawed? Yes. Does it matter? Not really. Fruits Basket is the show that you watch to say you've seen it once. It's a show that does need a nice new Brotherhood-style series, just to show the completed manga story. Yet at the same time, it still stands up 16 years later. It's both heartbreaking, heartwarming, and heart-melting. And yeah, this show is still funny 15 years later. I still laugh at the proof that's your real hair color scene. Impressive evidence. There are still many strange things in this world unknown to me. You didn't! I think you did! <laughs> Even its dub holds up 15 years later. It was the introduction to voice actors like Laura Bailey as Toru, Eric Vale as Yuki, Jerry Jewel as Kyo. It has some voice actors' first roles like Kate Bristol as Kisa, Aaron Dismuk as Hiro. It has a bunch of bad in-jokes that started like Mike McFarlane always playing cross-dressers, and even Chris Sabat has a role that some of you may have never heard him in before. It sports background roles for the likes of Jamie Markey, Kyle Hebert, Chris Bevins, and Sonny Strait. It was the early times at Funimations before the likes of Vic Mignogna, Travis Willingham, Todd Haberkorn, Greg Ayers, and many others. Okay, fine, and Kent Williams is in there too. Stupid Death Parade episode with him in it made me upset and salty. Hey, even Laura Bailey sings the ending too. If it is, I didn't want to leave them at all. It felt like I belonged there. I wanted to stay in that house with Yuki and Kyo and Shigure. I wanted to stay. In that case... <laughs> why not come home? In the end, why should you watch the show? Fruits Basket is a lot like the warmth of going home. It's a show you watch to feel good about things again. It's a fairy tale for the broken. In many ways, it reminds me of the song God Help the Outcast from the Hunchback of Notre Dame. It's uplifting as it is heartbreaking. Currently, Funimation holds the US rights, while our good friends at Mad Men Entertainment hold the Australian rights. 
If you've never seen the show before and want a relaxing night full of laughter, tears, and happiness, you can't go wrong at this banquet of feelings. Want to support the production? Check out our brand new store on Store Envy. For a small price, you can have a one-of-a-kind poster made by yours truly. If you can only give a small amount to help us out, check out our Patreon page. Any amount you wish to give us goes towards our production needs, so anything you can give us helps us a lot. To keep up with the latest in Anime America stuff, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and even Tumblr. Be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe to Anime America for more awesome reviews and top 10 lists. If you're interested in anything of pop culture, be sure to subscribe to Pop Spectrum. Thank you all for watching, and stay tuned to Anime America.